For decades, Boeing was the company NASA trusted with its most important missions. They built the Saturn V's first stage that helped launch astronauts to the moon during the Apollo program. They were a key contractor for the space shuttle. They developed key parts of the ISS and countless other defense and aerospace systems. So when NASA launched its commercial crew program in the early 2010 and started looking for private companies to build spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts to the International Space Station, Boeing wasn't just on the list. They were right at the top. NASA awarded Boeing a $4.2 billion contract to develop the Starliner. That was significantly more than what SpaceX received, $2.6 billion for their Crew Dragon spacecraft. Many believed Boeing was the safe, experienced choice. SpaceX was the newcomer, still proving itself. Boeing had the legacy, the engineers, and the trust. But fast forward to now, and the story has changed completely. Today, Boeing is no longer seen as the leader in spaceflight. In fact, they're often criticized as the worst performing company in the modern space industry. Starliner has been delayed for years, suffered repeated technical failures, and its first crewed flight ended with astronauts stuck on the space station, unable to return to Earth for nine months. And it's not just their space division under fire. Boeing's reputation in aviation is also falling apart. Over the past few years, several serious incidents involving Boeing aircraft have made headlines around the world. Mechanical failures, doors falling off midair, and even fatal crashes that claimed hundreds of lives. Investigations have pointed to quality control issues and rushed manufacturing timelines. While all this was happening, Boeing's CEO made headlines for a completely different reason, his massive salary. In 2023, it was revealed that CEO David Calhoun earned $36 million in a single year. That announcement sparked public outrage. The question on everyone's mind was, how does a CEO earn that much money while the company is missing deadlines and putting lives at risk? Boeing is now facing pressure from all sides, NASA, Congress, the FAA, and the public. Meanwhile, as Boeing struggles, newer and more agile companies are rising fast. One of the most promising among them is Sierra Space, and its space plane, Dream Chaser, is starting to gain serious attention. Once overlooked and rejected by NASA's commercial crew selection process, Dream Chaser is now being seen as a possible replacement for Starliner. It offers a fresh design, more versatility, and a much better track record of progress and innovation. Even after years of delays and technical problems, many people had some trust in Boeing's Starliner. They believed that despite all the setbacks, Boeing's long history and the massive investment in Starliner would eventually lead to success. People hoped that the first crewed mission, which was finally scheduled for June 2024, would be the moment Boeing proved it could deliver. But that hope quickly disappeared when things went terribly wrong. Shortly after launching, the Starliner spacecraft encountered major issues. The communication systems began to fail, making it difficult for NASA to maintain reliable contact with the astronauts aboard. Power systems started malfunctioning, causing concerns about the spacecraft's ability to function properly for the entire mission. But the most serious problem was that Starliner could not return the astronauts safely to Earth. What was supposed to be a brief mission turned into a nightmare as the astronauts were stranded on the International Space Station for nine months, far longer than originally planned. The spacecraft simply couldn't do what it was supposed to do, bring them back home safely. This mission failure added to the long list of problems Starliner had faced since its development began. The first uncrewed test flight, which was intended to demonstrate that Starliner was ready to carry crew, was conducted in December 2019. However, the spacecraft failed to reach its intended destination due to a software issue that caused it to burn too much fuel and miss its planned orbit. This forced a return to Earth without successfully docking with the International Space Station. Boeing then had to schedule a second uncrewed test flight to fix the issues. This second test flight didn't happen until May 2022, more than two years later. Even then, more issues were discovered. 
problems with the spacecraft's parachute system raised safety concerns about how the spacecraft would land. Engineers also found flammable materials in the wiring, creating a serious fire risk that had to be addressed before the spacecraft could carry astronauts. This delayed Starliner's first crewed mission further, pushing it back to June 2024. And now, after that mission failed so catastrophically, NASA is reportedly considering requiring another uncrewed test flight to ensure Starliner is even safe for future crewed missions. The repeated delays and failures have raised serious questions about whether Starliner will ever be ready for operational flights. What was initially seen as one of NASA's main spacecraft for carrying astronauts to the ISS has now become a massive liability. Its failure to deliver on key milestones, combined with the cost overruns and design issues, has left many questioning whether Boeing can still be trusted with future space missions. While NASA has had to wait for Boeing to fix these issues, new space companies are stepping up and proving that they can get things done. One of the most notable examples is Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. Back in 2014, when NASA selected spacecraft for its commercial crew program, Dream Chaser was not chosen. Instead, the contracts went to Boeing and SpaceX. But Sierra Space didn't give up. They shifted their focus from carrying astronauts to carrying cargo and continued to develop Dream Chaser. In 2016, NASA awarded Dream Chaser a contract for at least six cargo resupply missions to the space station. Since then, the spacecraft has made steady progress. The cargo version of Dream Chaser, named Tenacity, is now at Kennedy Space Center and is expected to launch in the third quarter of 2025. The main delay is not because of the spacecraft itself, but because the Vulcan Centaur rocket that will launch it is still being certified for use by the U.S. Space Force. So unlike Starliner, Dream Chaser's delays have been mostly out of its control. What makes Dream Chaser different from Starliner is its design and how it operates. Dream Chaser is a lifting body space plane. It looks like a small version of the space shuttle. It launches vertically on a rocket, but returns to Earth by gliding and landing on a runway, like an airplane. It can land on regular runways around the world, which gives NASA more flexibility during mission planning or emergencies. Starliner, on the other hand, uses a capsule design. It lands using parachutes and airbags, usually in remote desert locations. This approach creates higher G-forces during landing and requires complex recovery operations. There's also less flexibility, since it can only land in specific zones. Starliner was originally supposed to land using a propulsive system, firing engines to slow down for a soft landing. But Boeing eventually gave up on that idea because it was too difficult to get working safely. Reusability is another area where Dream Chaser has the advantage. Each Dream Chaser spacecraft is designed to fly up to 15 times with minimal refurbishment between flights. Its airplane-like landing makes recovery and turnaround easier and faster. Starliner can only be reused up to 10 times, and every landing involves desert recovery and more time-consuming work to get it ready for the next mission. Now, NASA is running out of time. The International Space Station is expected to be retired sometime after 2030. That leaves only a few years to complete missions, test new systems, and prepare for the future. NASA can't afford to keep dealing with setbacks and unsafe vehicles. SpaceX has been consistent, but relying only on one provider is risky. That's why having a second option is important, but it needs to be a real option, one that works. Right now, Dream Chaser looks like the better choice. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.